Hi, my name is Anna. I work as a technical marketing engineer with the service provider unit here at Cisco. And today I'm going to give you a guided tour of the NCS 560's system design. That's it. Let's go. All right. So first up, let's look at the left of the chart scene where we have the fan trays. And as you can see, we have three separate distinct fan trays and the documentation is going to call it one master and two slave fan trays. But come on, guys, it's 2020. I think we need to stop using language like master and slave. So let's make a start right here. And I'm going to call it one main fan tray and two supporting fan trays. Now, why did we design it this way? For easy replacement. So that, you know, you don't have to pull out the entire fan tray and uh, you can't use the system during that time and you'll have cables going all the way and you'll have to remove all the cables and then plug them back in. All right, so it's just for easier usage, easier replacement of the fan tray that we've split it into three distinct sections. Okay, looking at the main fan tray, it has four fans. It also has an ID prom, a PSOC, which controls all the fans in the system, and a few system status LEDs. Now, the supporting fan trays have three fans each, and while they do not have any intelligence, they do have an ID prom, and we've added a new bicolor LED to the front panel so you can monitor the health and the status of these supporting fan trays using these LEDs too. Okay, moving on to the power supply units, we have three power supply slots, they take AC or DC. Now the system will work with just a single power supply, but that's when you only have one RSP and you don't have two RSPs plugged into the system. Because hello, we also have RSP redundancy on this box, which I was going to come to next, but it seems like an important point to mention here. So if you plug in two RSPs into the system, you'll need two power supplies to run them, and the other power supply will act as a backup for the two power supplies, so you have a two plus one redundancy in the power supplies. Now, a very interesting design feature of our power supply units is that the minute you plug in the second power supply, the two power supplies go immediately into load sharing mode. So this decreases the usage of just a single power supply instead of you know waiting for it to exceed its power usage and then transferring the load or sharing the load with the second power supply, we start doing it immediately. Now this may be a very simple design tweak, but it helps a lot in increasing the life of the power supply units. Well, you know, power supply units are prone to hardware failures now and then, so this simple proactive measure from our hardware team improves the availability of the system overall and is a great design feature to have. And I thought I'd like to share this with you. All right, so now let's move on to the beating heart of the system, the RSP cards. Now, as you can see in the name of the RSP, we have an RSP4E. The E stands for an external TCAM. Now, there are two flavors of the RSP4 card available, one without the external TCAM and one with the external TCAM. The external TCAM just helps improving the scale or it can st you can basically store a lot more prefixes if you have the external TCAM compared to without it. So this card that I'm showing you right now has an external TCAM, which is why there is an E next to the RSP4 in the serial ID of the card. That is how you can spot it. But from the CLI also, you can give a show inventory and it will give you the same serial ID with or without an E, depending on the type of RSP4 card you have. Now, as you can see, we have two RSP4 slots and two RSP4 cards in these slots, which means I already gave it away, you guys, we have RSP redundancy on this system. Now, in the access and aggregation space, high availability is super important. And having two RSP4s in the same chassis in a one is to one redundancy, or you could also call it hot standby redundancy, really helps in keeping up with the 5.9 SLA. Well, you guys, I don't know if it's 6.9s now, but RSP redundancy definitely helps. All right, so why did I call it hot standby? Why not just simply standby or cold standby? Well, what the hot indicates here is, in case the active RSP fails for any reason, the standby RSP picks up all the traffic, all the control traffic, all the routing and switching processing actions without missing a single packet. All right, so going in for a close up, this is where you have all the timing related bits and bobs, pun intended. And in the middle of the RSP4 cards, you have the management and console ports. You also have a time of day port and a few other USB console, aux console, and a slot for a USB memory stick. All right, so now let's talk about the different ports that the RSP4 or the NCS 560 can support. Just above the RSP4s, you can see six different half-width slots. Well, we call these the interface module slots or the IM. 
Now, you may be used to these slots being called as the line cards on different NCS systems, but for the NCS 560, we call them the IMs, and they're basically the same, except the IMs do not have any intelligence. All the intelligence in the NCS 560 is present in the RSP4, and the interface modules are just plug and play. They don't control any data traffic. Now, we support quite a few different port speeds on the NCS 560, and as you can see here, we support 2 cross 100 gig, 1 cross 100 gig, 8 cross 10 gig, and even 16 cross 1 gig interface modules. And except for the 2 cross 100 gig IM, all the other IMs can go in any of these slots. Now, the RSP4 card that controls these IMs runs an ASIC called QMX with a throughput of 800 gigabits per second. This QMX ASIC has two cores, two NPU cores, if you will, and to ensure even distribution of traffic across the two cores, you know, for load sharing, we've mapped the IM slots to particular cores. And that is why we have a restriction with the higher bandwidth interface module going anywhere into the system to avoid uneven distribution of traffic on the ASIC. Uh, you can find this IM slot compatibility matrix on the documentation or data sheets for the RSP4. All right, so that covered all the important points, but one final point that I'd like to leave you with is that the entire NCS 560 system is designed modular, which means every single thing on this chassis plugs out and plugs in separately. Now, why it's important is, again, in the access and aggregation space, hardware failures are more common than probably in data center or core or, you know, those more protected environments. So what a modular system does is greatly reduces the mean time to repair. All you need to do is have a few spares for the parts that are more prone to failure but are essential for the system to be up and running, like the fan tray or the power supply units, or in this case, because everything is modular, you can have spares for everything and reduce your mean time to repair to minutes, really. So this is a very important design feature of the RSP4-powered NCS 560 system. Before winding up, one quick note, there are two different sizes of the 560 available. The one that we just saw is the 4RU 560, there is a bigger chassis than this, which is a seven rack unit or seven RU device, and we call it the 560-7. Now, the way the two 560s work is exactly the same, but on the seven RU system, as you've already guessed, we have a, a few more interface module slots available for you, 10 more in fact, so for a total of 16 interface module slots on the 560-7. All right, with that, I'll end my guided tour of the NCS 560's system design. I will also add a few important links uh, to the data sheets and documentation if you'd like to take a quick read. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Bye.